Welcome to St George's Westcombe Park for our worship this Sunday. My name is Julie and I'm a licensed lay minister or reader here. Today is the third Sunday of the Easter season. Taking part in our service are members of the East Greenwich ministry team and people from our congregation, including the choir who will lead some of our singing. Today, we will be hearing how the risen Jesus appeared to his disciples who were gathered together hearing about what happened to the two friends on their journey to Emmaus. And Jane will be sharing some thoughts with us about this. All the words you need to join in with the service will be on the screen. As we join together to worship God today from places near and far, let us greet one another. The Lord be with you, Alleluia, Alleluia. And also with you, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our first hymn this morning is My Jesus, My Saviour. As we continue to celebrate the Easter season, let us shout to the Lord and praise to the King. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The reading today is from Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? 
And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. It's lovely to be here with you this morning. This week, we're thinking about resurrection and why it matters. And it's something that I've been thinking a lot about, partly because of the losses of the last year and a bit due to COVID, and partly because over the last 10 days, we've seen the death of several high profile figures, chief amongst them, of course, Prince Philip, but also the rapper DMX, Nikki Graham from Big Brother and Baroness Shirley Williams. What does it mean in the face of loss to ponder resurrection? Why does it matter that Jesus is raised from the dead in bodily form? Why does it matter that he gathers with his disciples and eats broiled fish of all things? Why does it matter that the disciples get to touch his hands and feet? As a first response, I like this quote from the book Liturgy of the Ordinary by Tish Harrison Warren. She says, in the scriptures, we find that the body is not incidental to our faith, but integral to our worship. We were made to be embodied, to experience life, pleasure and limits in our bodies. When Jesus redeems us, that redemption occurs in our bodies. And when we die, we will not float away to heaven and leave our bodies behind, but we will experience the resurrection of our bodies. Christ himself appeared after his resurrection in a mysteriously changed but fleshy eating and drinking body. Even now he remains in his body. There's a lot that can be said both in response to that quotation and the passage that we're looking at, but I'm going to take three things. First of all, that central to our faith are the places that heaven meets earth. Second, that all of this happens in a world and amongst people that God has created, where physical things are holy, where the way that we use our bodies and minds matters for good and for ill. And third, that it is in our bodies that we will experience one aspect of God's power in the granting to us of new resurrection bodies. Sometimes in our faith, it's tempting to take some kind of sacred physical divide and ignore the fact that the Bible doesn't make that divide. It's a temptation that the church has certainly given into over the years, seeing the body as base and subspiritual, but it's not really one that the Bible bears out. Jesus is with his disciples, eating fish, able to be touched a person who has a human body with its limitations and indignities, a person who has known the most profound suffering yet has overcome death. As Jesus is with his disciples eating broiled fish, heaven meets earth, and the earthly embodied part of that is absolutely as important as the heavenly part. It's not just a heavenly thing happening over there somewhere. It's something miraculous happening when the two meet. And if we're ever tempted to put our Christian faith into a box marked sacred, 
in a different box to the day-to-day -day realities of life. This passage reminds us that the very miracle of life, of faith, is the two being brought together. It's this miracle that we're called to proclaim, as this passage reminds us. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. We proclaim that in the face of death, the death of Christ, the death of people close to us, we meet the risen Christ. In the face of bereavement, it is the incarnate Christ who ministers to us, the one who shares with us in our suffering and the one who holds out hope of life beyond death. I've been struck that amongst the news coverage of Prince Philip's death, there have been bishops lining up practically to speak of his personal faith and his extensive theological book collection. And that sense that for both the Queen and Prince Philip, faith has been absolutely central, source of joy and sustenance in all seasons. And that for the Queen, the knowledge that death is not the end will be one of the things that sustains her now. The miracle of the resurrection is that heaven meets earth and Jesus meets us in our humanity, in our joys, our sorrows and in the most ordinary things of life. I pray for us all this week that wherever we're at, however we're feeling and whatever we're doing, that we would know some of the surprising joy of Christ's resurrection and that among the mundane bits of life, as well as the joyful or the sorrowful bits, we would know the incarnate God within touching distance, walking with us, eating with us and ministering to us. Amen. We affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name.
time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy time for our prayers. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. God, you are resurrection. Bring joy to your church as we spread the good news that Jesus is risen. Help us to proclaim this message with enthusiasm and confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first fruits of new life around us, to the budding trees, blossom, flowers, and new plants. Inspire our gratitude and renew our commitment to stewardship of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are reconciliation. You show no partiality among the nations, but instead call all people to the way of peace. Bring an end to conflict and division. Renew leaders and advocates for peace with a commitment to the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are strength. Awaken hope and perseverance in all who need to hear a word of life this day. Those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, or sick. And we especially remember Chris, Penny, Miles, Barbara, Marie, and Pauline. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are life. We give you thanks for all who are baptised by water and your word. Embolden all who share this baptised life and renew us in faith and in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are comfort. Draw near to all who grieve. And especially we pray that you will surround the Queen and the Royal Family with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Refresh us with the promise that you will destroy death and that with all the saints we will be made alive forever in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw our prayers to a close with the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 
Well, good morning. I hope you enjoyed our online service. I have your notices. Now, as usual, there will be links to the people and the events that I mention in your newsletter and or on the website. <clears throat> so, as I said last week, we've entered the nomination period for our APCM. So if you want to stand for any of the leadership positions that are open, uh, you need to follow these instructions. The positions that are open are on the, sc on the screen here. You download, you go to our website and you download the appropriate nomination form for the position that you wish to um, be elected to. Um, you complete the form, including who your proposer and seconder are and their address if you know it. You, you sign the form and you email it to me, copy to your proposer and seconder. Now, obviously, it's best to discuss with your proposer and seconder that they are prepared to um, propose you or second you um, before you do this. If you're proposing or seconding, you, and when you receive the, the, the copy of this email, can you respond up to me uh, just confirming that you are willing to, to propose or second as the case may be? And then that's all that needs to be done. Um, the next time you'll hear about this will be on the 29th of April when your name will be called out as a, uh, a candidate for election. Um, well, that's that on the APCM. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you today is that the Church of England have opened a memorial book, an online one, for Prince, Prince Philip. And if you wish to add a personal tribute, you can do this by going to the Church of England website, which is written up on the on on the notice sheet here, but it's churchofengland.org, so it's fairly simple. Um, and and from there, you'll easily be able to access the the memorial book. Don't forget, it's Zoom coffee straight after these notices, um, and I wish you a happy and peaceful week ahead.